Well, I got this beer here. I'm gonna try. Oh my god, it's so good. It's gonna make me cry. Bottoms up. Hey, Belgian beer buddies. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Timmy, and I will be guiding you through three dark Belgian beers today. Without any further ado, let's get started. So it begins. For the first beer of the video, we're gonna start with a table beer, or a small beer as it's sometimes referred to. Here it is. It's Buff Double, or Brown, Dark, whatever you wanna call it. It's probably the beer with the least amount of alcohol I'm ever gonna cover on this channel, at 1.1. But this has its roots in medieval times, when it was brewed to be also drank by kids and servants. Housekeeping! So, let's pour this one out and get started. This beer is brewed in jupille sur meuse which is part of the bigger city of Liège, the capital of the province of the same name. It's also where they brew Jupiler, Belgium's best-selling pills beer. And as you see, Jupiler glass, so it's fitting. Uh, this beer, I mean, I, I got it when I was a kid at the table, sometimes, not all the time. Because, you know, in like just one little glass. Because it's still alcohol after all, but 1.1. I think it's in Sweden even, they consider this a soft drink, so it's exempt of their enormous taxes that they put on alcoholic drinks over there. But with any, any further ado, wow, that's pretty. It's a bit reddish. Huh. It's been ages since I've had this. Cheers. <laughs> wow, that's very, very mild. <laughs> light even. Very, very light. Oh, you call this beer? But mm, not bad. It's got a good flavor to it. That's what I always liked about that beer, you know. It, it it really is a bit like a soft drink. I mean you can drink a lot of this without getting drunk. So that's good. Really good. Wanna drink some more? If you're wondering who this dude is, some of you will actually know him. He's a Belgian football player, Jan Vertonge. Vertonge, yes, I Something only Belgians will get. Another reason why this was popular in medieval Europe and colonial North America is because it has quite some nutritional value. Or it used to, because there were traces of wheat and sometimes even bread suspended in it. Looks a bit clearer now, which is good. <laughs> I don't want too much stuff floating around in my beer, even though one of the beers that will be featured later has quite some stuff floating around in it, but that's because it's a special beer. It's gonna be awesome. We're gonna drink a little bit more of this and then we're gonna continue with the next one. Just then. Another usage for this beer was that my late grandmother used to use it when she made Belgian beef stew. If you're curious about what that is, there's a link in the description below. Twelve seconds later. Now that we're done with the soft drinks, it's time for a real beer. And more precisely, the beer of the Phoenix. Himberge, double, which is a little bit more amber than really dark. But, you know, we'll pour it out and say it's dark. <laughs> Originally, this beer was brewed by Norbertine monks in the Abbey of Grimbergen, which is a town in Flemish Brabant. The abbey was built in 1128, but the brewing of beer was abolished during the French Revolution, so from 1789 onwards. Later on, they did not recommend brewing the beer, but the brewery of Alkemaas contacted the Norbertine monks and asked if it, it was possible to commercialize this beer, which they did in 1958. And the first beer they brewed? This one right here. Now, let's open it and have a taste. As you can see, I have a appropriate Himberger glass. Yes, yes, we're way more appropriate with the glasses this time than with the Creek video, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a dark amber. It's dark enough for this video. But we're good. Hey! Oh. 
Yeah, I can I can already smell the alcohol in this one. <laughs> it's nothing like our table beer that we just had. Nice. Also, this abbey I was speaking of, apparently it burned down quite a lot and was rebuilt several times. That's why they call it the Beer of the Phoenix. And they have their slogan, Ardet Nec Consumitur, which is Latin for burnt, but not destroyed. Because the abbey always came back. It's time to taste this puppy. It's been a long time since I've had it too. It's, um, you can't really taste it 6.5% of alcohol, which is good, because, you know, no one's your... It, it, it smells stronger than it tastes. But, um... But, um... But, um, nice. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very full flavor you get. And a very malty, almost wooden aftertaste. Mm. This was actually one of the first stronger beers that I started drinking when I was going to the bar when I was 16, as you know from last video. <laughs> Oh, that takes me back. Actually, I've got a story for y'all. Meanwhile. So hey, this story I was talking about. Uh, some friends of mine wanted to save some money uh, by getting drunk quicker from this beer that I'm trying right now. I can bet I could double. So their great idea was to order spoons to drink it with. And let me tell you, it worked. They were hammered after one. <laughs> I don't really know the, like, uh, physics or whatever you want to call it or the physiology behind that so if any of you do know that please let me know soon after it's actually better than i remember it last time i had this i, I was under the impression that it was too sweet and i mean I, I did make a video about cherry beers but there i want it to be sweet with this beer i don't want it to be sweet it's like everyone adding fruit and sweet stuff to you know like gamey foods I don't want that. I just give me a bunch of mushrooms with my wild boar and venison and my beer like this. Oh god. Mother of god. And now it's time for the last beer on the menu today. Or like the French would say, la pièce de résistance. We have a beautiful Trappist beer here. Trappist Rochefort, number 10. Beautiful blue cork. It's brewed in the Abbey Notre Dame de Saint-Rémy in Rochefort, which is in the province of Namur. Yes, for this video, we've actually wandered into the south of Belgium. God dang it! I'm not a rat! This abbey was founded in 1230 and destroyed in 1789. Thank you, French Revolution. I'm French! Why do you think I have this outrageous accent, you silly king? It was rebuilt in 1887, and the first Rochefort beers were brewed in 1899. There are 15 monks that still live in this monastery, and the water they brew it with comes from a well within the monastery walls. That's pretty cool. Uh, what is a Trappist beer, actually? Well, let's talk about that. Trappist beer is beer brewed by Trappist monks. Who they are exactly is something you can find out in the link in the description below, because else this video is going to get way too boring. Boring! <laughs> All you need to know about Trappist beer is that it has to fulfill three conditions. The first one is that it has to be brewed within the monastery walls, either by the monks themselves or supervised by the monks. The second condition is that the brewery has to be of secondary importance to the monastery. The third condition is that the brewery is not supposed to be a profit-making venture. The income they gain from it is supposed to cover the monks' living expenses and maintenance of the buildings and grounds. And whatever's left over is supposed to be donated to charities and people in need. After all that blah blah, it's time to drink some of this beer. Which is actually not really a beer anymore, but it's a barley wine. Oh my god, it's almost a religious occasion. Oh my god, that smells great. And, and, oh look, an actual Rochefort Tapis glass. The hair in it. Blasphemy. Blasphemy! 
All right. Oh, this is going to be so good. It's been a, quite some time since I had the, one of the strongest rush floors. Because there's, there's also beers of this uh, Jaffa's Brewery that are not quite as strong. But, you know, I figured for this video, why not go all out? Why not go all out, eh? Sounded a bit Canadian there. Give it a rest, eh? They also have a lot of good beer in Canada, eh? Oh, Canada, my home and native land. Oh, look at this. Now that's a proper dark beer. I cannot see through this. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. Oh. Oh, it's bubbling up so beautiful. Cheers, everyone. A little later. <laughs> I'm gonna have to bleep all of that. <laughs> oh. Oh man, this is so good. I mean, this is a really strong beer at 11.3% of alcohol, but I can barely taste it. Yeah, it's that strong. The nectar of the gods. Oh my god, that's good. Wow. That's been a while. Now, the other two beers I put in the fridge because I'm like, yeah, you know, they're good, but I want to, I want to save myself for this one. And <laughs> oh, you see this, this right here, this is why Belgians are known for beer. Miserable fat Belgian bastards. There will be plenty of links in the description below to find out more about separate Trappist breweries and what they else all sell, because you can also buy meats there and bread and cheeses and it's also extremely good. But well, this is a beer channel, so beer, 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 beer. The foam on this is so silky. I want to lick it. <laughs> so, you know, having one of these beers is basically like having a big sandwich. It's so... Wow. There's some kick to it, man. And not just alcohol-wise. Several song-filled hours later. So, well, I am going to go raid the pantry for some assorted nuts to finish this extremely good beer with. I would like to thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, then please give it a like. And if you would like to see more videos like this, then please subscribe and turn your notifications on. It would help me so, so much. Thank you again, and bye! Bottoms up!